Welcome to Tea Pink. Today we have Mistress Adrena. Correct? Yes, correct. And I'm Mistress Eva. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always here. <laughs> and today we're drinking a red oolong uh, that I picked up from a tea merchant in Hong Kong, uh, where it's my favorite little spot called Plantation. And I hope that uh, you enjoy it because you haven't drunk tea in a while, is no, that correct? No, no. Yeah. yeah, when was the last time that you gave tea some attention? Oh god, a long time ago. Probably yeah. when, uh, when I was about 18. Um, I used to drink loads of it. Yeah. I probably OD'd. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to drink a lot, but it's been a I would say how long now? Because we have to figure out my age. <laughs> but yeah, it's been about since I was 18. Okay. I was drinking, seriously. Okay. Um, I moved on to alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> what tea did you drink back then? Um, a lot of the, the, the kind of the pearl teas, like the, the oh. red leaves. Oh, oh okay. Various. So like the ones that unfold. Fur, yeah, the unfold okay. ones. As I said before, lap sensation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Green and black. You used to work with that as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm back when I was a pastry chef. Yeah. yeah. I don't actually know so much about those those days. Those how, days. How long were no. you doing that for? Um, I was doing that for about five years, I think. Okay. So I worked mostly in hotels. So mm -hmm. I was at the Mandarin Oriental is where I finished. <laughs> that okay. killed me off. <laughs> Why was it intense? It was very intense. Okay. Yeah, very intense. It was a good place to work, but yeah. Mm. Um, I eventually got... Was it just very demanding? Um, it was very understaffed, very demanding. So when I was on breakfast, it was, you'd start at 4 a.m. So yep. I'd get up at 2 a.m. So I'd be going to bed at 8 p.m. <laughs> um, so there was no, that was my oh, life. Oh, okay. And in the places that you were previously, they weren't like that? Um, I'd still be doing, so I'd start work at 8 a.m., finish at 11 p.m. Okay. I'd often walk to work, so I'd, that would be an hour. So I'd be getting up at 5, getting oh. home at midnight, oh, wow. 5 to 6 days a week. And now what are your hours like? <laughs> uh, I still feel like I work every hour of the day. <laughs> Because um, there's so much outside of just the session time, isn't there? Yeah. But there, yeah, there are a lot more. I'm quite... I never start before 12.30 because the morning's to exercise and admin. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm done with usually by about 11.30. Oh. But I, I do a lot of... I'm a day person, a morning person. Okay. So I do a lot of day... I usually do the days if I can. Okay. Okay. Much better hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's still 12 hours or so. Yeah, I think that's more of a reflection of me and my personality and my work. You know, I, I choose to do that. Um, and what personality is that? Very driven. Uh -huh. um, I think um, you get a lot from being a chef. Like, it, it's kind of like being in the army, you know, yeah. it instills a lot of... Um, and so, yeah, very... quite hardworking, I think. Uh -huh. And I'm only really satisfied if I'm very busy and very tired. <laughs> and you weren't like that before you were chefing? No, I think I was. I think that's what drew me to it. Okay. I, I, my favourite thing about being a chef was when I got on the bus at the end of the day and like, my heart was racing and I was full of adrenaline, I was shaking and yeah, I always... But I'm a masochist. <laughs> Definitely a masochist. That's the tattoos. Yeah. I think so, I mentioned that the first time I met you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, am, I definitely am. Spot a masochist. But the, um, being a chef actually kind of trained you to take it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so this is the first um, round, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, I find that once you get onto the second, things things start to really tell you, but um, it's still worth it's it. Like the confusing. Smell. Yeah, yeah, and it brings out the different depths of the characteristics. Yeah, yeah. So it's not too hot. Yeah. Asbestos now. I should be okay. And the white teacups go well with the red lipstick. Mm -hmm. Oversight. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It's kind of like memories. Yeah? Mm. From the Lapsang Souchong days or? Yeah, or from earlier. China and from Oh yeah. Hong Kong. You lived, yeah. you lived there? My dad did, yeah. I was, oh, I was okay. there a lot in my childhood. Okay. Um, yeah, and things like the food particularly brings out very visceral memories. Yeah. And how's Inanna treating you? Very well, yeah. I'm sleeping again now. <laughs> you know when you first do something like this and mm. you just think about it the whole time and worry, like, did okay. I make the right decision? Is yeah. this going to work? I've got to stage now where I'm like, this works. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, so I guess yeah, for the audience, audience, what is an honor? 
Nana is my studio um, mm -hmm. that I operate out of in mm -hmm. North London, yep. Seven Sisters. And how long have you had her? Um, I signed the lease. Her. her. <laughs> yes, <laughs> goddess of love, sex and power yeah. and chaos. You can see it seemed appropriate. Something oh, wow. starting to open up in the colour, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a whiskey. Know, it's the same amount of stupid thing. Um, yeah, so signed the lease in September last year. Yep. It was operational by about November. Okay. So it's, yeah. Wow. Six months or so. Yeah. 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 So homey so. already. I love it. Yeah. No, yeah. it came together very fast, actually. Yeah. Everything seems to have come together quite fast. Like, I couldn't believe when you told me that you'd only been pro for like three years. Yeah. <laughs> I think it goes back to the whole thing of being a grafter and just get shit done. Yeah. I don't, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is shit a swear word? <laughs> I'm partially Australian. Yay, I'm so glad. <laughs> <I'm naughty today. laughs> That's good. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. And how has it changed for you? Has Inanna changed like how you play? Oh how you a, work? Yeah, a lot. Almost indescribably, mm. I think. Um, it's made me feel like more like myself. Because okay. obviously this you is how I represent it. myself. Uh-huh. The space is me and I, everything that I put into it. So, um, if you go into someone else's space, you're kind of working within their parameters. Yep, yep. And that's, and particularly if you're like an empathic player, the surroundings and everything yeah. will affect how you play. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is mine. It's obviously as well, it's, I do think it's an accomplishment. So, when I'm here, I'm kind of like boss, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which is obviously nice. So it's a lot of things, it's like it, it makes you, it's like an extension of yourself but it reflects back on yourself and also it makes you feel like you've really accomplished something. Yeah. It's like a very physical representation. Yeah, it is. It's a physical representation. Yeah. yeah. And I mean so much of what we do is so transient, right? Yeah. And it's like the person in front of us changes but then they're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course some remain as ongoing relationships, but a lot of the time it's not yeah, necessarily it's like that. Yeah, it can be fragile, can't it? And even mm. the ones you think will always be there, but it does. Yeah. Because you've always got to expect that it's going to be a moving yeah. thing. And it's like, even I understand that my style has developed so much over the last eight or however many years, but I don't have anything tangible except for bank accounts. <laughs> to tell yeah. me about that, right? Yeah. Because nobody validates our industry, there's no like awards or anything. Like um, a lot of yeah. the time we can't talk about it. Yeah. And so it's almost like our, accomplish uh, our accomplishments live in like a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're limited to a very, they're very superficial. Like they're mm. like social media. Oh, no. Your presence. Yeah, your, uh, just how active you are. Really superficial yeah. things like that. that shouldn't really bear yeah. relevance, but yeah, do. Okay, yeah. So. Mm, it's yeah, kind of nutty. Yeah, so I don't know how much oolong you've had before, but it's it's um, more on the oxidized scale of tea in general, and therefore it kind of lends to like a roast kind of a thing. Yeah, as opposed to maybe some. Uh, lighter treated like a green tea or obviously a white tea and so you get that smoky yeah yeah it's bacteria. kind of yeah like it's mm. nutty and it's almost cereally yeah and some of my favorites are rice. super super smoky mm. but this one I don't know if you get it yet but there's like a sweetness that kind of opens up towards the back of your throat I find and so I wanted to kind of create or, or I chose it because I see I mean, it's so cheesy, but I see so much dimension to you, oh. and so I, I, you know, I thought it would, it was a nice thing to kind uh, of let yeah, you try. I appreciate your <laughs> Yeah, I was a little bit obsessed. <laughs> Are you good. obsessed over anything like that? Um, I'm, I think I have quite an obsessive nature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Music. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm boring the tits of everyone with that. that. <laughs> yeah. And your ba your babies, there. My babies, my speakers, speakers my yeah, <laughs> super antenna. So yes, um, I'd say music I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. what, what about it, it triggers you? So I think you can be very much into music from either a technical standpoint or mm -hmm. an emotional. I think being an, a creative person, an emotional yeah. person for me, it's entirely emotional. emotional response. I just respond heavily to it. I'm a huge mm -hmm. technical nerd. I really like, see them listening to a song or anything. And yeah, and then I think it's just this kind of the nerdy side of it. Like I get obsessed about making play. I have a playlist like 
every different time of day or okay. mood or just stupid little things like yeah. I have my Ho songs playlist mm -hmm. which is all of my money songs and, like, <laughs> and I just get really into it so this is that like geeky aspect yeah but I think it's mostly a kind of emotional responsiveness that I yeah I, I almost I listen to nothing yeah and unless I'm sessioning Wow. Yeah, because I because I live in the jungle mostly, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I prefer to hear all the animals. There are certain places I think you should, yeah, yeah. not listen to music yeah. for the sake of. When I lived in London, I played the sound of the jungle. I get that. Yeah. From my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> now so that I sweet. think about it, I'm like, oh god, I was so homesick. <laughs> Well, because I talk so much at the end also, so I can't have one track Indeed. to like bring them down, otherwise <laughs> it'll just be repeating. Yeah. Uh, and then I have like, um, I think I call it like, it's not dismantling, it's like um, oh, dismantling, yeah, I call it dismantling. And so that's my, the high point. Okay. That playlist. Uh, sometimes I go there, sometimes I go Why do you call it dismantling? Um, because I think the flow of how I run my sessions, it's very, it's about like getting in, and then breaking out and then bringing back together again. That's kind okay, of how I yeah. approach everything. And um, yeah, mine yeah. definitely has a. So I do tend to have. I often I will play a shuffle, but mine does have a crescendo. Yeah. yeah. So it starts with a certain. I have certain tracks I always start with as well, mm -hmm. and it does have that yeah. um, line yeah. to it. I was telling you earlier, I have a sensory deprivation playlist. Yes. Which is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I managed to find all these songs from, but I can. That sounds like. Creepy. I'm gonna, it's creepy. It is. <laughs> I'll play it to you. Do you want to tell them what the, what's like, on your sensory deprivation um, playlist? I could do that, couldn't I? Um, I'd have to check. But it's like um, quite mellow, ambient mm -hmm. music, but with mm -hmm. these voiceovers of like almost philosophical lectures going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, which must be kind of unnerving. But I feel like, like it's part of the service, like not only do you get your kink and to you have to live your life. <laughs> I will change your life. Um, um, are they in like a bag at this time? So or? this is, yeah, when they're fully tied, or something. they did. Okay, okay. Yeah, and sometimes I do it where I put earplugs in, but I yeah. prefer it when they can hear the yeah. music that I'm playing. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, um, you can also do like earbuds. No. Yeah, 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 that's what I should. Yeah. I saw some I really want, actually, some really nice quality in it. Yeah, and now I've been doing it's a work expense. Ones. Yeah, yeah that's just what I do with that. the tea. That's what I'm yes, doing with all okay. my honey tea. <laughs> okay, now I'm buying honey tea. This is, this is, you know, it's part of work, it's fine. <laughs> Did you specialize in anything? In yeah, the illustration. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. so I have drawn anything? Um, lately? Yeah, not lately, no, unfortunately. Um, mm. I do kind of miss it actually, mm. but I think the when you have like a creative personality, it often translates into lots of different fields. So yes, definitely. and design and composition was something I was always interested in. Mm -hmm. So I had loads of fun putting this together. And what did you use to um, draw? Um, mostly, actually, I did um, ink. Okay. Did pen and ink and ink mm -hmm. washes. Mm -hmm. um, Any particular subjects in particular? I loved doing adult books. Actually, because oh. I loved reading and I oh. loved like the real imagination, so I used to illustrate adult books. Okay. Um, I also did travel journals, so oh. kind of illustrated journals of rather than writing down what I did, I draw uh -huh. everything. I draw the food, people, make little notes in it as well. So, and I loved doing that. So even when I stopped doing illustration, I carried on mm. whenever I travelled doing that. Oh, okay. And when you did uh, adult novels, do you mean graphic novels? No, no, not even no. actually. So, so like accompanied. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm working on a book right now. Are you? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Um, it's with. Well, I do everything with my slaves these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's one. Of, it's one of my slaves, <laughs> and he's um, helping me put it together. It's, it's um, he's actually a history and ethics professor, and so when I heard that and how well he was writing and how well we were getting along, it kind of brought up a lot of things in me and I've always kind of wanted to you know I guess once you're a creative person you always and but I didn't want to write something that was just about me and how I started drumming and da 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 you know because for me it just feels laborious I just, mm -hmm. yeah. you get asked all the time all and you run through all the time yeah. you have your spiel yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm sure you can add things to it but but that's not kind of what was exciting for me I read a lot of sci-fi I really yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Why is that surprising for people? Actually, sometimes I say I read a lot of sci-fi and then they, you read? <laughs> I would deck them. Like, Send them my way. Of, what kind of impression do you yeah, have me that I'm not it. reading? <laughs> but wow. anyway, um, and, and so I've always had the, at the back of my mind like a layer of, of viewing the world from a sci-fi perspective and I always wondered if I would ever go in the direction of being able to actually put that down into anything. And so I, I when I met him, that kind of thought came up again and it's I guess it must have kind of really fit in with it because I wouldn't just write sci-fi from like an action perspective I can't go in that direction I, I really like sci-fi that kind of questions the nature of our current reality so yeah. kind of like um just a world of worlds sort of thing it's like a yeah uh, yeah like, that was like a yeah. analogy for yeah the world wars and all of that and yeah. humans yeah way of Never learning from history and working the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's kind of like anthropological. In yeah, yeah. Oh, so I guess it's like sci-fi dystopia, basically. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we started chatting, and I asked him to basically think about like interviewing me about my life, and then maybe we we can work that into something. And kind of what we're at right now is um, a story about. Um, how femdom is going to look in the future, basically. Okay. Yeah, and the moral implications to that. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. So we're we're making tracks, but I was thinking to get somebody to illustrate some of it. <laughs> is why I talk about uh, it. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing! And it's me saying I like to illustrate adults' books. I want to write that one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like in the last. Ten years or so, there's been so many huge kind of social cultural shifts because of the internet. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be in the next decade that we're going to really notice huge changes. Okay. Because I think that's you know like in everything it affects everything. And now with all the new laws we're having and how easily accessible everything is, I think that's going to be big changes. I think we're at the beginning of mm -hmm. those big changes. Mm -hmm. okay. so, what do you think those changes might be? Or have you seen any changes in the last? Few years? Well, obviously with the you know hard to escape the whole censorship mm. laws and what's happening there. I think mm -hmm. that's definitely having an impact. So what are these um, censorship laws? Oh. <laughs> For those who are not um, yeah. informed, so we have in America Foster Sesta. Mm -hmm. It's an anti-sex trafficking law, mm -hmm. um, but it's met with a a lot of kind of protests from within and, and with outside of the sex industry. So it's um, tied up with decrim. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's trying to prevent sex trafficking, but by um, a lot of the websites Locking which we advertised on have been seized and closed down. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's you know the impact of the, the lost work, but mm -hmm. for other people, it's pushing more vulnerable sex workers, yeah. trans, disabled those below the poverty line back onto the streets. Yeah. Um, so there's actually been in America an increase in street violence, walking. street yeah. walking, rape, and murder. Exposure to um, potential for those things. And more importantly and ironically, there's now a sort of vacuum of power left that when we had our own kind of autonomy of a yeah. vetting and clients that's been filled with pimping. So actually yeah. this anti trafficking yeah. law has so, increased um, yeah. pimping. So it's actually had a quite, um, yeah. Ask a few sex workers, read a few studies, and he'll, yeah. he could have figured that out. So, <laughs> and it's the international, like, yeah. pushing for, yeah. for decrim stuff, but there's a, a huge backlog to it, you know, mm. religious groups predominantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and do you think that has, is also what triggers the inability for us to maintain profiles on places like Instagram? That is the other, the other thing, isn't it? The, um, Closure censorship, or, yeah, yeah, so it's just getting mm. noticeably stricter. Mm. Um, yeah. And for example, you getting your camera shut down. Yeah. You didn't particularly play something. I never posted. So it, if you yeah. wonder on what terms they're choosing it, and therefore it's almost there. Because it, it becomes the moral then, yeah. rather than actually. Content based. Yeah, content based. And when it becomes moral, I think that's when it's a problem because that's the about you. It seems regressive. Yeah. It feels very regressive. It feels very know. regressive. It's like you would yeah. hope that we would. Yeah, and the fear is, I think, because it's sex workers, people don't really pay attention. But nobody cares. What happens happy, to sex workers affects all women. Yeah. So it's, it's a feminist issue, and it's also, yeah, I think, quite 
yeah, more cultural, it's going to have a wider impact. But because it's happened to sex workers, no one cares, so no one's talking yeah. about it. We're kind of sleepwalking into mm. something that's going to potentially be. Yeah, to just trying to take yeah, <laughs> trying to take control over women's yeah. bodies all yeah. over again when they were making tracks in a Western context. Yeah, I kind of feel a little bit like when I start a social media account that the end is already inside. Yeah, it's, <laughs> isn't it? And it's it's unsettling. It makes me feel unstable. Yeah. Feel just like an outsider to. to yeah, something. that's Which it. You do. It makes you feel. Um, it makes you reflect on yourself more. Like it makes me, f the more you have it hammered home that you're not part of society and you're like an outsider and you're this like kind of splinter group from society. It does make you feel that way and it does actually. Yeah. So it does have a psychological impact. Totally. Always feeling like. Which is why maybe I isolate yeah. myself more and more to only really hang out with other workers. Yeah. Um, it's also though why I, yeah. I will tell everyone what I do and I will yeah. be in your face with it because I'm just like, no, I am here. I almost, I almost I'm hearing nobody. I'm such a home, really I'm such oh. a home body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hotel yeah. body. <laughs> Whatever you want to call That's it. So <laughs> um I wanna talk a bit more about um when how you discovered kink as a teenager because mm -hmm. I was always aware of the subculture but it wasn't a part of my life until I started working like properly. I always had the personality for it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, I'm an Asian woman and we all have the personality. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not all of us, a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I guess how did you figure out that you wanted to be in the kink community at such a um, young age? It happened so naturally uh -huh. and seemed so obvious to me. So I was just. Um, Typical London kid, always up in town. Uh -huh. um, and so I think about 15, my favourite game was just going into sex shops at lunchtime, uh -huh. watching all the businessmen like scatter in fear when they saw like a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guys, we're all in here, I know what you're here for. <laughs> you can't try and stand there looking innocent now. Um, uh, so I used to do that. Just, um, you'll be running to me in a few years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I was never particularly sheltered, didn't uh -huh. have a very sheltered childhood. Yeah. Um, started reading. You know, just picking up the magazines, because obviously drawn to these amazing magazines with these big titted women in rubber. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, started reading them, instantly fascinated, mm -hmm. collected them, mm. started to read about Do torture you garden, what magazines. Shops. Yeah, Maki, Skin Oh, wow. Yeah, I, have, I still have hundreds. Of amazing. Well, yeah. I need to see this. Yeah, okay, I should be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, piles of them. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, when they were still in print. Okay. Um, okay. So then I started going obviously to the fetish shops rather than the uh -huh. sex shops, yeah, yeah. more fun. And it's such an open, friendly community I was yeah. for mm. 17, got myself a little rubber dress, mm. went off to TG, mm -hmm. was really worried about getting ID'd and then I got to the door and it was just this trans, to match my nail varnish, <laughs> no problems whatsoever. Here is my ID. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I just, um, yeah, walked in as soon as I walked through the door, I was like, yeah, I'm home. Oh, great. And you still dance there. Uh, yeah, I still or, perform there. Well, yeah, like perform now. Yeah, so I think I went for, for I went there for about a year and a half. Every every time it was on, mm -hmm. back to school after the weekend, uh -huh. <laughs> and then after about a year and a half, two years, started modelling there. Okay. And yeah, it just became like when you were my family. Legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> and how did you play on that Saturday night in a bar as opposed to at an honor for? Um, or whatever. So usually when I'm at a club, I, I go more socially, okay. generally. Like um, how we are at kink clubs? Yeah, absolutely. It's sat in the corner <laughs> whispering like witches. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. more! Because okay. obviously all oh my friends... <laughs> That's about the only... Stripping men. No, I'm like that, that in a vanilla really. club too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Trying to adapt now to the vanilla world is quite difficult. I, I just don't. Yeah. I just yeah. bring a slave and then it doesn't have to change. Yeah. Yeah. Even just like, yeah, have relationships. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> Yeah. Like your quote. <laughs> yeah, your, the, how, um, that particular house <laughs> decided to oh. reject your application because you are a woman of dubious moral character. <laughs> <laughs> did they send it to you on paper? They didn't even tell me. Oh, they didn't even tell me. They were just they like, told uh -uh. Your friend. so they told my friend, and she 
quoted that back to me. Yeah, it's now the, the tagline of my website. It's the best quote. Yeah, I know. I was like slightly pissed at him and then thrilled. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm putting that on my business card everything. Yeah, no, for sure. Do you have a business card? Um, I do, yeah. yeah. I need to get it reprinted now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't because I'm scared that people are going to find it in, you know, the wrong pocket. I just know that I'll get drunk and give it to everyone. Oh, yeah. if it's just like randoms. Yeah, then, yeah, but okay. Yeah, I'm much more cavalier with my um, yeah. No, I mean it'll get into the the pocket of their partner. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's my concern. Oh, that's very considerate of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a beautiful space. Maybe we can do like a walkthrough later. But um, yeah, I'm when I left, I texted the slave that we're seeing together and I said I was super proud of you and for what you've built. Oh, it's really, I mean, you. I mean, your opinion means a lot. It's an incredible space. And um, I, yeah, you've only had it for a little while, but it already looks so full and you've gotten so many different people coming through it doing yeah. really incredible things as well. And I remember you mentioning that that was kind of one of your tr drives. Absolutely. Why do you think it's one of your drives? and who have you had in here and what have they been up to and how has that felt for you? Okay, so yeah, what was important for me, one of the reasons I wanted a space is I wanted somewhere for all women, well, women with any kind of creative project or something that could, could just be their, yep. their best selves, do that. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to be able to support that. Uh -huh. um, so that was a big, a big drive for me. Why, um, why do you think that was interesting? Or... Because I'm very pro-women. Um, I'm a feminist. Yep. I love women. I feel like we, you know, need to help each other out and we need all the help we can get and mm -hmm. um, I'm very proud of all women and what we can achieve and, and is that celebrate that a result of being in this work or um I think I always was uh -huh. but I find that particularly people, women in this industry tend to fight harder shout louder have be very have a lot of opinions be very passionate about feminists um, mm -hmm. I find out of all my friends granted most of them are sex workers mm -hmm. the sex workers are the most engaged in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was with before because, regardless, I was always a feminist. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely feel a sense of like sisterhood mm -hmm. in this industry. Mm -hmm. So you've shot your own stuff in here, obviously. That's mm -hmm. photo shoots as well as um, some video work. Yeah, I really love your work with the Sugar Town Girls. Thank you. Um, I will send you the preview. Yeah, yeah. I want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've done three things with them now, right? Uh, two actually. Two. We reshot okay. the second one. Oh, okay. To be okay. in here, to okay. and I'm so glad we did because it looks okay. it looks great. It's much better. Okay. Yeah, I'm ex kind of excited for that one. Okay. And I'm a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. But, I can't yeah. wait to to see. But no, I've also had I've had ra two rappers in here. Okay. One of them female. Uh huh. Um, yes, yeah, so I've had a musician in here. Yeah. Um, someone shooting a femdom video, okay. like a promo video for Patreon. Okay, okay. Um, oh, great. Yeah, lots of other doms come yeah. through to use it, which I love. I love having other doms use the space. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. yeah, it's been really great. Yeah. So in, in a sense, you've kind of achieved what you wanted from Inanna. I have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean within such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it turned around and happened really yeah. fast. Yeah. What are you going to do next? You know, I started to think about it. Illustrate a femdom book. Well, <laughs> like you, I do, I do write. And I do yeah. long-term goal with no, yeah. I, I would love a book. Okay. Um, okay. But long-term business goal, mm -hmm. potentially second property. Okay. But then more uh -huh. an apartment. Okay, more domestic. Mm -hmm. So people could rent and stay okay. in a mini hotel. In London? In mean, big. It would, if, if it was in the UK, it would be in London. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be outside London. But that would involve a lot more thinking. Where that might be. And how that would work, logistics and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. But that, yeah, those are my long-term goals. Right now, I'm just trying to survive and get through the day. You know, when you're so busy, it's like, if I just get through the end of the day, I've won. So that's me at the moment. I'm so busy. It's just like yeah. work and travel. It might yeah, be. I'll do that for a while. And then yeah. think about the next step but I'm very happy on my current step mm -mm -mm. yeah no it's great and yeah it is great. time to enjoy it right yeah uh, I it's think a wonderful time <laughs> it's important to at least for me because I also have a tendency to power through mm. and get really excited and just keep powering and then I crash and I have burned out badly mm. once yeah. um, you have to schedule holidays yeah yeah no, um, yeah, you have to force yourself. Yeah, yeah. And holidays, I travel a lot, and yeah. none of them are holidays. <laughs> They're always exhausting. Yeah. But this yeah. year, I, I would like holidays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Would you say that you're on like an introverted, extroverted spectrum at all of things? Or do you not really I think I'm quite confusing. Because I'm quite... For yourself, I mean, not for anybody. Yeah, else. no, I, I, even when I try and analyse it, I get confused. Mm. I'm very good at spending time alone. Yeah. I love time alone. Mm. And I can be very shy, but at the same time, I, I love the company oh, of people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's very kind of transient. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's I've heard how to say. Weirdly, I think also yeah. I've changed with time. I used yeah, to be very introvert and yeah. quite crippling shy, and, and now yeah. I seem to be flying in the other direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, I get quite sort of like, particularly, I'm much better in smaller groups than anyway. Like, okay. Large groups, I exhausted, very sad. Yeah. Yes. You're probably much more introverted with very good social skills. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for chatting it to was me. A pleasure. I, I would love to keep talking to you about so many more things, like your journaling, and you know, there's there's so much to that as well in and of itself. But we only have yeah, a lot of time. No. We'll chat again. We will, Maybe we will. you can be my first repeat guest. <laughs> so honest. Maybe in Hong Kong at a tea house. <gasps> oh my god, okay, it's a date. Mm, yeah, no, I've been offering that to you. That needs to get away. Yes. <laughs> no, definitely. No. All right. I'll get drunk and I'll book a ticket. Okay. <laughs> We're all going to get everything to book it for you. Even better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah.